Before I start my presentation, I have to apologize on three levels. Firstly, that I'm in Berlin at the moment and you can only watch this video presentation. Be sure I'm watching you as you are watching me right now and I'm looking forward to our video discussion later on. Thanks to Professor Butler and his team who allowed me and us this digital experiment. Secondly, I will probably disappoint you since I don't believe that literature in open Western democracies has the power to really be a medium of resistance. I will suggest to use the category of subversion to describe what political literature is doing rather than referring to the category of resistance although subversive literature can tell stories of resistance as we will see. And thirdly and most annoyingly, since I have already spent two minutes with apologizing and have only 18 minutes left now, I will give you a very short and schematic introduction in my theory and methodology of literature as subversion. If you would like to discuss some examples of subversive German literature, like the prose of Thomas Meinecke or Ferdinand Zamolu, the plays of Elfriede Jelinek or René Polesch, or Titanic, Titanic, the German magazine of satire, we can do that afterwards in our discussion. If we are discussing subjects, representations and contexts of resistance, we have to start by clarifying what kind of resistance we are talking about. In other words, we have to answer the question who is using, in which culture, at what time, which kind of medium, against whom. We analyze two very different ways of resistance when talking about the weapon in the hand of a Jew during the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943, or the reading of a piece of literature by an author in a cafe in Germany today. In my presentation, I will focus on the powers of resistance that the medium literature can develop in open Western democracies. When dealing with political writing in the German-speaking world during the last two decades, after the historic turn of 1989-90, we have to be aware of the specific history and meaning political writing has to the German-speaking public. With whom else should we start if not with Günter Grass. Grass is a German writer and, in a way, incarnation of what most. Grass is a German writer and, in a way, incarnation of what Germans understand as a political writer and public intellectual. On the 7th of December 1999, Sweden's King Carl Gustav awarded him the Nobel Prize. Here we see a photography of this ceremony printed in the German satirical magazine Titanic about three months later. In his speech balloon, Grass says many, many thanks, and Carl Gustav answer, answers confusedly, unhand me, it's already February. This collage leads me into both central assumptions my presentation will depart from. Firstly, that the, uni the, universal and, uh, the universal and public intellectual has passed his prime and still clings to his lost status. Secondly, that we already have a new generation of authors, like the writers of Titanic, who use different literary or intermedial strategies to subvert hegemonic discourses and the conditions of the literary system. This is what my monograph, Literature and Subversion, on contemporary political writing is about. Since 1898 and Emile Zola's Jacques, the L'intellectuel universel, became famous and a central figure of public political discourse. Intellectuals like Bertolt Brecht, Jean-Paul Sartre, Heinrich Böll and Günter Grass used their literary texts, political manifestos and their public voice to spread their literatur engagé, their eingreifendes Denken, or just their political views on specific issues, and had to bear the consequences of their engagement personally. Defamation, 
expulsion, in some cases even imprisonments. Nevertheless, the public position and importance of these universal ways of intellectual speaking and political writing have been questioned regularly. For instance, by the historic avant-garde or by radical thinkers like Theodor W. Adorno, who called the literature engagée a gebleuk, a blad, and postulated a more experimental, formal, radical type of literature. In 1983, Jean-François Lyotard already digged the tombeau de l'intellectuel, the intellectual's grave. And during the last decades, alternative political and aesthetic movements like the student movement of 68 and NGOs proclaimed the death of literature. A discourse analysis of the publications of literary critics and literary scholars can easily show that on the one hand the l'intellectuel universel and the littérature engagée are the central point of reference when the political value of literature in Germany is discussed, but also that these central figures at the latest since the German unification have widely become delegitimized. A recent example from 2012 is Günter Grass' poem Was gesagt werden muss, which is critical of Israel's politics and was ridiculed almost everywhere, not only because of its content but even because of its form and the gesture of speaking in it. In my monograph I have described a paradigm change in Germany during the 1990s and after the unification from this literature engagée to a literature which, which deals aesthetically with discourses of subversion. Now I will introduce my concept of how to analyze the way in which subversive literature archives, reflects or ironizes political, institutional, avant-gardistic, aesthetic, subcultural or deconstructive discourses of subversion. The methodological decision to approach the field of contemporary German prose with the term subversion makes it necessary to define this diverse term more clearly. In order to generate my literary and cultural analysis model, I first examined the different meanings of the subversion terminology, which is used in the German-speaking world since the late 18th century. I did this through a short diachronic discourse analysis. In the course of this I examined a lot of historical documents which helped me to differentiate between four discourses of subversion. All of them have developed over time and coexist today. In a second step I analyzed about 70 mostly German literary research works which have used the term subversion as a practical category after 1989-90 to gain knowledge about how and with which theories and methods literary texts are described as subversive. The four discourses of subversion can partly be distinguished from each other by sometimes, but sometimes they also interact. Literary texts can archive, reflect or ironize these four discourses of subversion. Also, they can become part of a distinct discourse of subversion and thereby support it. Think, for example, of the so-called women's literature, which creates positive examples of womanhood and by this even plays a role for the self-consciousness of the feminist movement itself. Or experimental texts, which are part of the avant-garde discourse of subversion. To describe the relation between literary texts and the discourses of subversion, different literary and cultural theories can be, moved, can, can be used. For sure, the number of theoretical approaches which have been used in research until now is much bigger than those I'm going to highlight in the next part of my presentation. Literature as a Manifesto of Revolution Literary texts can depict revolutionary and terrorist groups and actions. 
If we follow a broad concept of literature, we can understand the statements or political manifestos of terrorist or revolutionary groups as literature in the political institutional discourse of subversion. But this perspective is at the same time problematic because normally such texts do not develop a specific literary quality on the one hand and on the other hand they aim directly at political effects which brings them closer to the known literature engagée. Moreover, during the last two decades it was hardly possible to speak of a revolutionary situation in the Federal Republic of Germany which could have been the subject of such texts. For sure that will change after our conference on the resistance here in Oldenburg, we will see. Literature as avant-garde. Literary texts can be defined as part of the artistic avant-garde discourse if they use techniques of the literary avant-garde like montage, collage or cut-up, position themselves in the field of literature in a new way or trespass the borders of the literary discourse. Texts which stand in this tradition are called post or neo-avant-garde today since the techniques of the historical avant-garde and its border crossings are absorbed by the institutions of the art discourse. Literary texts which have been scandalized or indicted in other social knowledge systems as the political, media or economic discourse are also defined subversive literature according to this concept of avant-garde. However, it is important to pay attention to the matter of how these texts can only develop their subversive avant-garde potential in a specific time, a specific environment or as a border crossing to another discourse. Literature as in German, I call it minoritaire distinction, and perhaps one can translate this as a distinction from a minor position. A lot of literary texts tell about the struggles between majority and minority, hegemonic discourse and counter discourse, normality and divergence, or dominant culture and subculture or define themselves as a textual distinctions from a minor position through their characters, topographies, language or position fields. In doing so, they become part of the subcultural discourse of subversion. This analysis can be accomplished by means of Foucault's discourse analysis, uh, Deleuze and Guattari's description of a literature mineure or methods of cultural studies, for instance by Stuart Hall and others. Nevertheless, it is important to bear in mind that textual distinctions from a minor position are built upon dichotomies. These can be problematic because they construct collective identities of minorities which can generate hegemonic effects themselves or be absorbed by other social groups and institutions in the sense of a mainstream of minorities. Literature as deconstruction. Literary texts can be described as self-referential, contradictory and intertextual formations which break and dissolve the units of the sizes, sense, author and identity. With theories and methods of gender studies, queer studies and post-colonial studies, it is possible to show how gender, sexual and ethnic identities are de- but also reconstructed in literary texts. Texts which deconstruct the characters' gender identities through travesties or subvert the distinctiveness between the own and the other can be described as literary forms in the deconstructive discourse of Subversion. Now we have these wonderful graphics here. Aren't those the most confusing graphics you've ever seen? I'll try to explain what they are meant to be. In order to be able to analyze the literary text and its relation to these discourses of subversion in a differentiated way, we have to go through five stages. <coughs> 
Firstly, it is important to describe the political institutional structures and above all the literary discourse that belongs to the text with the methods of discourse analysis. Secondly, the form and representations of subversion in the text have to be analyzed. In this context, the question of its neo-avant-garde quality, its intertextual or parodistic practices and its discursive, contradiscursive positioning towards other discourses is of prime importance. Thirdly, the contents of subversion, which can be found in a text, are being thematized and, for example, minorities' movements of distinctions or the deconstruction of hegemonic stereotypes are being analyzed. Fourthly, we have to collect the topoi topographies, characters and languages of subversion a specific text con contains as tunnel systems, terrorists or secret codes and to analyze their connotation and function. Fifthly and last, it is necessary to examine the author as a public person. This point derives from the assumption that the staging of authors in the media is still of great importance for the social, signific for the social significance of literature. However, this media staging is subject to a system of different regularities than the literary text under the rules of literary discourse. Literary texts, like Thomas Meinecke's advanced pop literature, the Kanaksprak concept of Feridun Saimoglu, the underground literature of the social beat movement, the satires of Titanic, or the intertextual and playful texts of Elfriede Jelinek, are dealing with the discourses of subversion in many ways. Through subcultural distinctions, neo-avant-garde aesthetics, deconstructive strategies, satiric elements, or just the affirmative reproduction of knowledge or topoi of subversion. Such forms of political writing entangle in formal or content apparatus they are conscious of, especially in relation to sorts of literature engagée or the universal, intellect, uh, the universal intellectual, subversive literature incorporates its knowledge of its more and more minorized status as a medium. In fact, these self-reflexive moments, like being conscious of its own limitations or even ironic about them, make subversive literature at the same time complex and convincing. Subversive literatures do not tell us, was gesagt werden muss, what has to be said, but, was auch dann besser anders gesagt würde, wenn überhaupt jemand lese, what should be said differently in case that anybody still reads. So we can throw the idea of political writing on the dumping grounds of a post-historic capitalist and multimedia today, there are new concepts of political writing that deal with the complex and globalized structures of power and know exactly about their own marginal position in the information society. But if we are really convinced that the end of stories will still be transformed and rewritten on and on, we need lots of more research to do. I propose a research field that could be called studies of subversion in which researchers from all over the world exchange their knowledge and analyses about discourses of subversion and how different media in different cultures archive, reflect or ironize them or which role different media artifacts play in specific discourses of subversion. So I release your hands now since my 20 minutes are up and look forward to our discussion. Thank you very much for your attention.